Hey, I'm going to make a quick recording on a, um, a request that was made. I don't know if it was a request. I said I would do it. Um, this is mostly for chairs, vice chairs, whoever else might be attached to this uh, mail service for the modern wig party. Um, I recently was appointed the um, assistant or the vice chair for my state's modern wig party, and um, I was given an email address, and I was told how to set it up and was told that uh, others were having trouble setting it up to go to connect to their mobile phone so if they got an email they would get it on their phone instead of having to use strictly using the web access so me being a tech guy I played around with it and I was able to find and make it work which wasn't really too hard it's just a couple of confusing things so um, I decided to make this quick video I figure I'm having one of those days where everything's gonna go wrong so I thought maybe if I could make this video and put it out there and help somebody else out karma would go my way again <laughs> so that's why I'm doing the video today anyway so um, the web address I was given um, we use Bluehost for our email so if I type in well, I can see it isn't gonna go any better today okay <laughs> if I go to Bluehost Bluehost.com and what we're all supposed to do in, in the party is to get access to email. You click on login when you get here. And then you click on webmail login. And once you click on webmail login, you put in your email address and your password. My email address is right here, nhvicechair at modernrig.org. And then I put my password in. And then log in. And once I do that, I have a choice from here. It's running a little slow because of the video. I can use these three different webmail access points to get my mail. And they're set up for these three. And if I go into, like, I was recommended to use Squirrel, squirrel Mail, so I went into Squirrel Mail and set it up. And you can see I did a test message. Uh, I have it set up so that it won't delete messages from the web access. So if I have any kind of client, it'll go to the client but if I delete it from my client it'll still remain here I use this kinda of like a backup so um, this is what I assume most people use in the modern wig party to get their emails through their official email addresses up here but I wanted to get it on my phone or maybe through a client on my computer actually I have it running on my phone is what I wanted so I could get at messages when I'm out and about doing my thing so I tweaked it around a little bit and I was able to figure out how to make it work. So I'm going to show you now how to make it work. So as long as you have this uh, an address inside here out of, Bluehost, out of Bluehost that works, this is what you do. I'm going to go back. And the way you set it up is you have to have, in order to set up a client on a phone or on the desktop, you got to have settings to do that. If you look down here on this page, the first page you come to, one of the options is configure mail client. You want to click on that and all it does from here is it opens up a page that gives you all the settings you need to set that up if you look here there's an automatic configuration script which I've never used successfully <laughs> so I don't use those I set them up manually different clients do different things and I'm going to show you what one of mine does that's a, mine's actually one of the hardest ones to set up so if you can do it with the one I'm going to use you're probably going to be okay keep in mind you need your email address you need your password and then you need the incoming and outgoing server and ports. Now ports are way different ways that things communicate over the internet. Uh, you have to open up different ports to allow different programs to run. If you're ever into gaming or anything like that, you have to open up all kinds of ports on your firewall and stuff or your router to make things work. In order to push mail back and forth, you need ports open or closed. Um, there are certain default ports and then there's ports that some services use. These are the ones that this service uses. Now there's SSL and there's non SSL I only use SSL I've never used these don't any any kind of security you could put on is better than none so if you want your mail accessed by everybody else eh, use non secure if you want but you this this works fine I've used it and it, it works okay so um, here's what we're gonna do we're gonna set this up in a mail client on the computer so you can see it the phones work the exact same way if you go into your mail app on your phone either a uh, uh, Apple I, uh, an iPhone or uh, Android you set up mail the same exact way so here's what we do you keep this page open I'm gonna go ahead and open up my client my client I'm using today if it'll let me go down 
it, it run this this whole menu runs real slow when I'm using the video. Let's see if it'll see as I am let me click. All right, so I solved that problem. I'm gonna have to just do interruptions while I start and stop programs, unfortunately. So I got um, the the program CMonkey running. It's my mail client that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use these settings here to configure it. So now right now I have CMonkey running. There are enough There is no there are no accounts set up. Uh, a lot of your different um, mail clients, you can go into either File, Edit, or Tools, and and go and set up your new account settings right here it's on on this program. It's under Edit, Mail and Newsgroup Account Settings. Uh, it's also right here on the front, which makes it a little easier. Whatever client you're using might have different ways of getting in to set up a new account. So as long as you can get into setting up a new account, you click on it, and each program walks it through differently, but they all use the same way of getting settings. So I'm going to set up an email account and click Next. It asks me what I want my name to be. I would put my full name. Uh, email address is my current email address with the party, so it would be NH Vice Chair at modernwig.org. Hopefully, you can hear me. I'm typing on the keyboard. So, NH Vice Chair, modernwig.org. That's my email address. I want to use the POP settings. IMAP, I, again, another one of those things. I, I know IMAP works fine, but I just have better luck with POP. I just need the port number. Now, default is 110, but we need a different one. I remember that. So I got to go back to here. POP3 is 995. So I got to put 995 for the port. And then the incoming and outgoing mail server is box1194bluehost.com. So you have to type that in too. So 995. Okay, incoming server, box 1194.bluehost.com. I did it wrong again. There we go. Box 1194.bluehost.com. Make sure that's right. Yep. There we go. And it's the same for the outgoing, except for the SMTP port is 465. Username, NH Vice Chair at modernwig.org. I don't care about global, global inbox. Okay. Yeah, let's just keep that. That's just a setting for CMonkey. So I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, I didn't delete the SMTP. Sorry about that. Um, so, but it's, just, it's you put in the same mail server and then you put in the port which was 465. Okay. Hit next. Account name. I'll just leave the account name the same. It could be anything you want. There's all the information. The only thing it didn't do here, which most most servers will or most clients will ask you, is it'll ask you for the password. You have to enter a password for your email account. This one doesn't do it. It makes me fail once and then restart the client and then it'll ask me for the password. So that's why I had trouble last time making the video. So let's see what happens this time. The, unfortunately, the password might already be in here. Nope, good, it's not. So see, it's having trouble down here finding it. And this is where it gets all messed up because it won't let me open and close this program while the video is running. So I'm going to stop the video again and do another section. And you'll see it comes up and asks me for a password. So I'm going to stop that now. Okay, we're back in. And uh, I had to restart the program. It doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is go up to edit again and go here to my account settings. Inside my account settings, you'll see you got to do one more little tweak. You got to make sure it's asking for um, security and a password. So I'm going to go in here, server settings, and see where it says connection security. That's wrong. You got to use SSL, secure socket layer. You got to have SSL running, otherwise it won't work. And I'm going to just verify my settings again, 995 and 465. So 995 on pop. And that's fine. Okay. So I used SSL. Now the next thing that should happen is it should ask me for a password. When I go to send, receive, get messages. There we go. Enter password for there. And I'm going to have it remember. Paste it. Hey, look at that. Test message, it works. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. There it is right here. Outgoing server. 
An outgoing server is SMTP. Now, no, we got mail because it did receive, but we haven't tested if it goes if any mail goes out yet. So it does say the server name is correct, but see how it says port zero? We gotta fix that. There we go. See, it has this 587 actually, which is very strange. So I gotta change that to 465. Oops. 465, and again, we want SSL. Now, now the SMTP is right. Now, when you set this up on a phone or most other mail clients, it'll walk you through all those steps. This one doesn't. I'm showing you the hardest one. <laughs> this one is definitely the hardest one. Outlook or Microsoft Mail or Android devices, whatever. Um, they all walk you through step by step. They always ask you the server names for both POP, IMAP, or and SMTP, as well as your ports. And they want they ask you about security, and they ask you about um, passwords. Now, the one thing I will going to tell you here that you didn't see is we're asking you about security. I'm going to hit OK on that. Make sure it saves it. Go back here again. Um, under server settings, where it says security settings. Uh, especially on Outlook, it'll ask you about authentication and ask you if it requires authentication. You got to click yes on that. If it asks you for authentication, click yes and make sure SSL is enabled. You shouldn't have any trouble with that. You should be good to go. And that's pretty much it. So as you can see, I'm getting mail. I could try to send mail to myself, but uh, I know it works, and I don't want to. I'm not going to put that on the video. Other email addresses I use. But this, this will do the trick. And what's nice about this is you can get your mail here or on your phone. Delete them as what, like right now, I'll delete this one. Uh, yeah, delete. Now it's gone. But if I go back in here to the web access, come on. I'm going to Squirrel Mail or one of the other two, it doesn't matter. It's still there because it keeps it there. Okay. So I'd have to go in here to delete them, but I'm not going to. I'm going to start using this as like a backup, a record keeping, so that all my messages stay in there you know, until they get overburdened them, and then I'll, I'll put them in folders or do or archive them or whatever. But I didn't want my client to delete the messages. I want the messages to stay on the server so I can get at them from anywhere. If my phone dies or I'm not a, the machine that has the client running, I want to be able to go on the web and still see the messages. That's just my preference. So hopefully this video was a little helpful. Um, you know, and, and actually, this this isn't just for our party. This is actually for anybody else who uses this kind of service. So that's how you hopefully simply set up your client or Android or uh, iPhone access. And uh, thanks for watching.